Hey, welcome everybody to Triathlon Tips Live. This is Coach John, 70.3 edition. And I want to welcome you all back to the show this tonight. Uh, tonight we're covering transitions, how we're going to be a fast and efficient transitions, how we're going to get everything set up and how we're going to load things and what we're going to buy and what we're going to really get ready for a quality transition um, in our racing. Uh, I want to welcome you to uh, the show again. I'm Coach John. I'm welcoming you from Florida down here where I just finished a sprint triathlon race yesterday, getting ready to see and test and see how my uh, 70.3 program is going to be going. Um, I'm hoping I'm live. Uh, so, uh, of course, as always, our sponsor for the show is Longevity Wellness. Uh, they are, again, in the process of building their uh, supplement store that will really help us out in the future, uh, being able to get all the supplements you need, not only for your for your uh, athletic performance, but also in your health and, uh, and well-being throughout your life. Um, race report. Got to tell you, I uh, raced a, the GFT, the Great Floridian Triathlon yesterday, which is a great program. It's a great uh, great uh, race if you get down here to florida to do it it's in the it's in the hills of claremont it's really a fun race uh they put on all kinds of events they put on a sprint race they put on a half they put on a full they put on a 1.2 mile and a 2.4 mile swim race and they also put on a uh 15 or a, a half marathon in the evening while the the full distance people are still out on the course they run a, a half marathon to keep everything exciting and going all day long but uh i have to tell you my goal in this race was to just have a decent race and uh to test my foot my foot injury to see how that's doing and to test my athletic uh endurance because i had just gone through if you all remember from last week i went through a couple of uh i went through a couple of weeks of being um of being sick. I had a really bad flu, not COVID, not COVID at all, but it was a really bad flu. And I was still coughing all the way up to like the day before the race. And I still got a little bit of a cough going on, but I wanted to test that, uh, that uh, athletic uh, or the endurance and, and see how I'm, I'm racing and get a little bit of race uh, juices flowing. So how did I do? Well, I was, uh, I swam the 400 yard swim in six minutes, 34 seconds for the 22nd fastest out of the 300 racers that were in the race. Um, I rode the bike course, which is only a little over eight miles. It was a very fast course. There was only one hill in the course. There was a couple of rolling hills in the back of the course. Uh, we'll see those in uh, climbing video that'll be coming out uh, later on this week. Uh, yeah, I will be debuting a climbing video um and i'm going to show how uh the climbing works um in triathlon and what you should and shouldn't be doing in, in climbing and i really had a couple of really good points in there to and the rollers that uh, showed how it really works out but that uh worked great i finished that uh eight miles in just a touch over 24 minutes uh being the 25th fastest again out of almost 300 racers in the race and then I had a very conservative run. Like I say, I'm working on making sure my foot injury is okay. So I really ran a nice, like easy jog for the first mile of the 3.1 miles and then picked it up, picked it up, negative split the whole thing. Came in at the end running about a, a minute and a half faster than I started the race with. But it did drop me back in the standings. I did come in fifth overall in my age group. And 69th out of the near 300 racers in the whole race. So I was really, very, very satisfied with my race. So um, with that said, I kept telling you guys that I was not sure what I was going to be doing for Ironman Florida 70.3. And I have made the decision that I'm going to go ahead after this stream, I'm going to jump over to the Ironman uh, site and I'm going to go ahead and sign up for that race, get myself uh, an Airbnb nearby. Uh, it is, you know, an hour and a half drive from my house, so it's not that bad. I can jump over there on, set, on Friday afternoon, come back after the race. One day it'll be a really quick, uh, 
quick show and I'll be able to go around and uh, take a look at all the stuff that goes on at the Ironman uh, type events. I really love the atmosphere in those big races. Um, this one's a really fun one. It's in December, December 17th. It's eight weeks away. I feel like I can cap my, uh, my um, endurance and my be race ready to at least put in a decent performance. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started with our um, fast, easy transitions. So here we go. You know what? You can buy speed. You can work hard to build speed, but did you know that there is a way to go out there and get free speed? Because that's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring you some really great information on free speed through transition. So what does that mean? How do I do that? How do I get that free speed? That's what we're talking about tonight. And I'm going to tell you that transition and free speed from transition starts before you buy the first piece of kit. What do I mean by that? What you got to look at is some of the, the items that you buy prior to the race you, that you want to make sure are easy and fast to work with, like your kit. You don't want to go out there and, and have to change from swimsuit to a bike kit to a run kit and anything short of uh, being comfortable in a full Ironman race. You should be doing, even in a full Ironman race, you should be putting on your race kit in the morning, in the hotel room, or at your home, or wherever you're at, and you should be taking it off in that hotel room, at your house, or wherever you're at, or Airbnb, after the race. So what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to make sure you have a very comfortable kit. You want to make sure it's a kit that you can get on and off easy in case that you have to use the, uh, the facilities. And you want to make sure that it's extremely comfortable. I personally like a kit with uh, with sleeves on it. It has been proven faster both in the swim and in the bike. So the, the sleeves uh, kits are better. I love them. I've been using them now since uh, 2018. I don't like the sleeveless ones. I haven't been using those. So you want to buy yourself a kit. I like the hybrid kits. Now, my team kits aren't a hybrid kit yet. Uh, we're working with CCN to get those but uh, you, what I mean by hybrid kit is a kit that zips down to the waist and then separates and is almost like having a jersey top that's attached in the back like a tri kit, but in the front like a bike kit. That way uh, you can take that off on and off much easier in case you have to use the facilities and you have the ability to zip it down and, and open it up uh, and get some air into that. Um, Sumar Po makes a really great one. There'll be a, a video coming out on that. Uh, really great one for racing. Uh, that video will be coming out in about two or three weeks um, on that kit. So any, I got to tell you though, that uh, there are some items that I am sponsored on this and there are some items that I'm not sponsored on this, but I will have links below for everything in this, um, in this uh, uh live stream that i talked about i'll have something I'll, I'll have that and if you uh are liking what you see give me a thumbs up uh hit hit subscribe and become a uh become a um a patron you can see right there uh, if you want to support the channel patreon.com backslash coach john uh you can join on on board and help support uh the channel this is very expensive to do and uh and i need to kind of supplement this as as any way i possibly can so uh, with that said, uh, let's move on and get into uh, more items that uh, you, you want to buy. You want to look at your bike shoes. You don't want to buy a bike shoe. You want to buy a, a, um, a triathlon shoe, which usually has Velcro, or now a lot of them have the bola on them, the, the clip that open up that you can clip onto your your. Um, your pedals, hold on elastics, and slide your feet into. Practice that. I do have a video on that. Uh, I will put that video in the in the um, in the the links at the end of the of the show on how to mount your bike uh, faster coming out of transition. So, with that said, you got the you got your your kit that you want to buy that's specific to uh, triathlon. You want to buy your shoes that are specific to triathlon, and when it comes to a helmet. You want to buy a helmet for triathlon that has a easy to latch and unlatch chin strap. Uh, what I mean by that is I know several different ones that are out there 
that have a very difficult and hard to latch and unlatch, cost you a couple of seconds in transition. Um, so you want to avoid that. You want to find one that latches uh, nice and secure under your chin, but it's easy to pinch and pull apart uh, for putting on and taking off in transition. All right. So what we want to do then is we want to, we've got our kit, we've got our items that we want to have uh, for our transition. And we're going to go ahead now and take a look at um, what those items are and how to set them up. So uh, we're going to talk first about support items. Uh, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to make a list. We're going to make a list of items. And you can see a list right here uh, that you can uh, just jot down and write down these items. You might add items, you might take items off, but that's just fine. But this is a good quality list that you can uh, that you can use to get through your transitions. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to divide this into five different categories. And I've got four of them up on here. The fifth one is just what you're gonna have on race day, uh, your kit and your, your heart rate strap uh, and the things you're gonna actually wear to the, the event. Um, but those, those are super easy, and you can do those anyway. But uh, let's take a look right now at the list items that you're going to put uh, put out for your race. You're going to have support items. You're going to have swim items. You're going to have bike items. And you're going to have run items. And each one of those we're going to take and separate, and we're going to set up on our bed or on a table or however you set up your transition bag, you're going to set them up in separate lines on your bed. Um, that's what I use is, and you're going to put your support items first. And what you're going to get in your support items, let me reach over here and grab some of them. Um, on your support items, you're going to have things like um, your sunscreen. And I'm a big fan of the SolarX sunscreen right there. Uh, that's great sunscreen. I am not associated with them whatsoever. I do have a video again on this on the, the site. These, this sunscreen is amazing. Put it on in the hotel room in the morning and forget it. It's on there all day, all the way through the day. I have never had any problems whatsoever with sun after using solar X. You're going to put that in that bag. You're going to put a towel in that bag. You're going to, um, some people like the microfiber. I like a regular terry cloth towel, but a small one, a face towel in that bag you're going to put your mat uh in the bag that you're going to use for uh transition you're going to put your items on whether it's a transition mat i'm not a big fan of transition mats because they're thick and bulky they take up a lot of space i'm more of a fan of a of a medium-sized towel you've seen those gatorade towels um, i use one that i got at a race several years ago it's bright purple so i can see that quite well and then i also put in there um, oops, excuse me. I also put in there, uh, foggies. They're in, uh, the support bag. That's where this is an anti-fog. I use them on the, on my goggles and on my, um, and on my, go and my sunglasses. And I also put this bright yellow fluorescent yellow towel directly under my bike. Now, why do I do that? This towel I put directly under my bike. It's for nothing more than a contrast with the purple towel. And I can see it coming into transition uh, off the swim and off the bike. This is a bright purple and yellow patch on the ground that I can spot when um, <clears throat> going through my transition. I love it. It works really good. I also have fluorescent yellow bar tape. So that my bike, when it's sticking out, I can see my bars uh, over anybody else's bars around. So that's why I use the bright fluorescent towel. You want to put something like that in there because you're not allowed to use balloons. You're not allowed to put markers at the end of the of the row. Uh, if there is, I've seen some people that will use um, will use sidewalk chalk on the ground. Uh, that works great if you have a, a pavement or concrete that you're running on, but. But other than that, this works really, really, really good. Um, the next thing you're going to put on there is your lubes. Uh, you're going to use a wetsuit lube. I love uh, the tri-slide. Uh, this is great stuff. I paint it on really, really good. Wetsuit goes on real easy, comes off real easy. Again, when you were talking about um, uh, the, the items that you're going to buy in the store ahead of time, you want to make sure that you try on your wetsuit. You do not want to... Um, 
use a wetsuit that is not the right size, or you get a company like Sumer Po where they'll send you a, a wetsuit, you try it on. If you don't like it, you can send it back and get a different size. So you want to be able to try their wetsuit on and make sure it works. That Sumer Po wetsuit, again, I'm going to have another video about a month from now on that one. Uh, amazing wetsuit, um, biodegradable, all kinds of good stuff. So you want to check that out. But the tri slide right there, you can pick that up. I'll have a link in the description below at the end. And then, of course, you're going to use your uh, chamois butter. Um, I use this uh, as a as exactly what it says, a chamois butter. Um, I put a lot of it on on a wetsuit swim. I'll put it on before the swim. Um, on a non-wetsuit swim, I put a lot on and have a mushy butt, but that works just fine. But I put the chamois butter on prior to the heading off to the swim. Um, and then for, for, uh, bad weather, you're going to have a garbage bag. And what you're going to use that garbage bag for is, uh, you're going to take that and you're going to lay this garbage bag over your shoes and your helmet and stuff. If it's, if it's raining to, to keep the water off and keep your items dry while you're swimming and while you're biking, but you're going to use that garbage bag. I take the garbage bag. And I keep a garbage bag in my uh, transition bag, my main transition bag, all the time. It comes in really, really handy. Um, so go ahead and throw that in your main transition bag. Speaking of the main transition bag, there's a couple of other items that I always put in my main transition bag. I always keep a little uh, tool kit in, the, in there, a bike tool kit, because you never know when you're going to need that on race morning. It's got all the different uh, Allen heads and screwdrivers and stuff, just in case you need to tighten something up uh that you noticed you may not have uh you may have missed in your bike check before you before you load your bike i also always keep a piece of velcro in there uh, i also keep a piece of velcro in my in my um spare tire uh or spare tube bag because velcro comes in handy for anything that might come loose uh during the race i've actually had to use it one time to strap the uh toe of my shoe because my my um my sole ripped off of my bike shoe and I used this, the Velcro to hold the bike shoe on together and to make it through the rest of the ride. And I also keep a bungee cord in case that you have to rack your bike the night before the, the, uh, the event, uh, in case there's some wind or people want to move it or whatever you strap this around the, the seat post and around the bar, uh, keep your bike from falling on the ground. So that's the items that you're going to have in your support bag. Now, in your swim bag, um, you're going to go ahead and you're going to put in your goggles, your ear and nose plugs if you use them, your supplied uh, swim cap you're going to put in uh, after you receive it from uh, with, with your race check-in. You're going to put your wetsuit or your swim skin, depending on the weather conditions and if you have a swim skin or a wetsuit, um, you're going to put that in. And... This is one I like to put into this bag. Also, I put a gel or a bar, something in, because you're going to be several hours after you eat your breakfast, before you go on the on the uh, start to swim. You might get a little hungry. You might need a little bit of, uh, of a caffeine boost, a gel with a caffeine boost in it um, before the swim. That's the place to put it so you don't lose it. Uh, so that's what you're going to put in your swim bag. Now, when it comes to your bike bag, this is our next item that we're going to have. We're going to put in the bike bag, we're going to have our helmet, our bike shoes, our socks, and we're going to what we call blouse the socks when we set up. Uh, what I mean by that is you're going to take your socks. You're not going to lay your socks or fold your socks or anything. You're going to blouse your socks. And what I mean is you're going to take the sock and you're going to pull it down so that it's it's in a little ball like that. And you can stick your toe of your foot in there and it pulls right up onto your your ankle you got your socks on in a second guys uh these people who want to save one or two or three seconds and transition by not using socks it really doesn't work the greatest uh i have always used socks i have won many races and i've never had a situation where i've lost a race by two or three seconds because i didn't have uh that some guy beat me because he didn't have socks on and i had socks on um so you're gonna put your uh your your socks, your sunglasses, and your nutrition. And another uh, transition trick, another transition trick is to take your nutrition that you're going to use. If it's a longer race, um, you're going to take and put your your 
electrolyte chews, your bars, and your gels, you're going to elastic band them with some really light elastic bands. And when you when you set up your transition, you're going to put it in your helmet, and you're going to be able to take that and just grab it and stick it in your pocket. And if you put them in the order that you're going to use them, with a little practice, you can get it in your pocket. And you'll be able to pull these out really, really easy. Boom, boom, boom. And out come your, your product. Uh, you can take the elastics off before you put them in your pocket or not. It's up to you. But uh, that's what you want to do there. You can elastic band all your nutrition together. It really helps out to uh, when you're when you're uh, in transition. You don't have to worry about picking things up and worrying, you know, how many gels or whatever. It's all pre-packaged. It's all pre-done before you even pack your uh, transition bag. Now, also, when, as you're going along, you're going to pack those. Those are, the, those are the, really the major items that you're going to have in most races. You're not going to need much more than that. Uh, for me, in a longer race, I use gloves in a half Ironman race or longer. I like to wear my gloves uh, on the bike because uh, I, have a, I have a sweater. My hands get... Um, my hands get very uh, sweaty and slippery on the on the bars after a long length of time. So I like to throw on a pair of gloves. Uh, that just makes it much easier for me personally. I don't even take them off in T2. Uh, I run out of T2 with the gloves on. And when I get on the run, I'll start pulling the gloves off. So they don't take any extra time really whatsoever to put on those gloves. Elastic bands. You want to put a, uh, a couple of sets. You want to put at least two sets of elastic bands and what you're going to use those for is you strap the elastic band on the heel of your shoe and attach it to your bike holding your shoe open and in place you're going to open your shoe up as wide as you possibly can so your foot slips in you're going to practice this over and over and over again you're going to practice this and every single time you go on a bike ride so that it's your natural way to get your shoes on you're also at the end of the bike ride you're going to take your shoes your feet out of the the shoes for a faster transition, um, you're going to take your foot, like I say, out of the shoe. And when you take your foot out of the shoe, you're going to pedal into transition with your feet on top of the uh, on top of the pedals. Uh, this makes for much faster transition. You don't have to worry about your shoes; they're on there. You're going to run through transition much faster. Don't worry about your oh, you got socks on. You're going to pick up some some stuff on the socks. You can wipe that off real fast before you pull on your shoes. No problem whatsoever. Uh, if it's a little bit colder race or, or, uh, or a rainy race, uh, you're going to put your arm warmers in there. You're going to have your vest, your or a, and a, your vest or rain jacket uh, that could be that could be in your bike bag. Also, a neck gaiter if it's a real cold race. You want to put something around your neck. Um, and if it's a rainy cold race, and I've been in a couple of really rainy cold races. But the one that sticks out in my mind, and I still have PTSD from this, and that is Ironman Louisville in 2018, where it was 42 degrees and raining out. And I wore uh, thermal gloves, which was great. And then afterwards, I, or during the race, actually, I spotted some people wearing dish gloves. You go to the to the uh, dish dish detergent department in the in the uh, store, and you buy dish gloves that have um, that have uh, uh, knurling on the on the palms and the fingers for picking up dishes when the soap. And you put those on; your hands stay cool. They or so your hands stay warm. They stay dry, and you're able to grip everything and move them really, really well. I would love to have had those on in that race. So you're going to use some dish gloves and needless to say, but needed to be said, you got to make sure you bring your bike, which has already had a tune up and checked out at the bike shop and your bike pump. You make sure all of that stuff is all loaded up and ready to go. Now, our last bag that we're going to pack um, for the actual race is our run bag. And in a run bag, we're going to pack our shoes of course these are your race shoes and then like i told you you're going to go to the store ahead of time and you're going to buy stuff for a faster transition which includes elastic shoelaces again i've got another video on that that you can go check out on my uh on my videos on my on my channel uh i got a video on the uh, elastic shoelaces check those out you're going to put your hat or your visor in hat or visor not both 
hat or visor. Make your decision ahead of time what you're going to wear before you go to the race. And your your number belt is going to go in there. And when you get your packet, you're going to, day before the race, you're going to open your big bag. And you're going to do three things and three things only. You're going to put your swim cap in the swim bag. You're going to put your number on the front of the helmet in the hel- in the in the bike bag and you're going to put your number on the number belt in the in the run bag and then you're going to close it all back up done you're not going to be messing with it you're not going to be digging through it you're not going to be changing things around now some of the optional things that you could put into this uh run bag i use calf sleeves uh so i put those in there again i blouse my calf sleeves so they go on really really easy i'm not just trying to drag them up over my leg they're bloused. I pull them up to my ankle and just pull them up and, and feed them out. Practice that. Practice transitions. Practice, 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 practice. So you're going to put a second pair of socks bloused just in case there's some situation where your first pair of socks gets wet or they rip or they just don't feel right. Uh, you'll have a second pair of socks there. If it's a hot race, you're going to get one of those cool towels. I got one and I Cross the finish line with it over my head in the hot races and see Tampa Bay Lightning go bolts. Uh, but you're going to use that. And what that does is every t- as long as that stays wet, it stays cool. It keeps your neck cool. It gives your brain the feeling of being your body being a cooler temperature. And when you pour water over your head or put ice in your cap, when it melts, it melts down onto that. It funnels to the front and it just leaves nice cool water running down the front of your kit all the time. Great tip use that tip. I don't see many people doing it. And I don't know why it is amazing to do. Uh, chapstick chapsticks is, is great to have, especially if you're in one of the longer races. Um, some people like a different pair of sunglasses for your run and your bike. Uh, you're going to put your run ba- uh, glasses there. Some people like to carry a hydration belt. I personally don't carry a hydration belt with me at all. Uh, and never, ever, 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 folks, never use a camelback. Those things you're going to be carrying seven, eight pounds of weight that you don't have to have. You worked really hard to get in shape. Why carry a seven pound dumbbell in your hands the whole race or on your back the whole race? Uh, and whatever brace you might need for the race. Um, knee brace or ankle braces or whatever you use that possibly has to be in there. You're going to put that in that bag. Now I've been saying bag, bag, bag all along. What do I mean by, um, by in the bag? Oh, uh, one thing I want to point out first, before I say that, when you're packing your bags and I told you about hat and visor and ears, nose plugs, things like that, don't pack anything you're not going to use on race day. Make your decisions. When you lay your items out, you're going to take these items. um, Before we pack our bags, we're going to take these items. We're going to lay them out on your bed in individual piles. And you're going to take and you're going to go through what I call a mock transition. You're going to walk up to your swim pile. You're going to go, okay, I'm getting ready to walk down to the swim. I'm going to take and I am going to... uh, Look, I'm saying, okay, I need my goggles. I need my earplugs. I need my wetsuit. Do I have it there? Yes. Then you're going to take your phone and you're going to take a picture of that pile. Then you're going to go to your bike pile. Okay, I'm coming in off the swim. I've taken off my wetsuit. Um, Now we're getting ready to go on the bike. I'm going to take and I'm going to put my sunglasses on. I'm going to put my headband on or whatever I use. I'm going to put my helmet on. I'm going to put my gloves or whatever you're going to use there on. I'm going to put my bike shoes on, you know, my socks on, my bike shoes on, and then I'm off and going. But I'm going to make sure that in my mind, I'm actually running through and visualizing, visualizing the actual transition uh, as I'm going along. I'm going to look at, um, I'm going to look at that. Hey, Angel, how's it going, bud? Um, I'm going to look at, in my mind, I'm going to go through transition as it's sitting on my bed, I'm going to, I'm going to actually think about the actual motions I'm going to make in that transition. Um, then I'm going to move from there. I am going to move on to the run. I'm going to do the exact, oh, I'm going to take that picture of that bike setup, everything that's there. 
and then I'm going to move on to the run. I am going to set up the run. I'm going to do the exact same thing. What do I need? I want to put on my visor. I'm going to put on my other sunglasses. I'm going to put on my race belt. I'm going to put on my shoes and off I go. And I'm going to set all that up and I'm going to take a picture of that. Why are we taking a picture of it? Because if you start second guessing yourself, you don't want to dig through this bag and open it all up. You want to take and look at your phone and go, oh yeah, I did pack that. It's right there. I did pack that. It's right there. I did pack that. It's right there. So now we're getting ready to pack our main transition bag. And what we're going to do is if you do a lot of races, you pick up a lot of these along the way. These are those little string bags that you see. Um, this one's from Challenge Daytona a couple of years ago. I got this when I bought a bunch of Solar X products. Like I said, I'm not sponsored by them. I buy their stuff. I bought this at a, I bought got this. They gave it to me at a at a race. Uh, you're going to get a whole bunch of those over time. And what you're going to do is you're going to now take a string bag and you're going to pack your swim stuff in a string bag. Tie that string bag, lay it on your bed. You're going to take and put all of your bike stuff into a larger string bag because you're going to have shoes and a helmet in there. You're going to put all of that stuff in a string bag. That way, your swim stuff is separate from your bike stuff. And then you're going to do the same thing for your run. Your run stuff is separate from uh, your swim stuff and your bike stuff. And you're going to take your support stuff. You're going to put all that in a bag. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to set those four bags on your bed. Then you're going to put the bags into your main large transition bag. Um, you're going to take that and you're going to pack it basically backwards. You're going to put your swim stuff at the bottom of the bag. You're going to put your bike stuff in next. You're going to put your run stuff in next. And you're going to put your support items in next. And the fifth bag that you're going to pack is going to have your kit in your and your heart rate monitor, and maybe your flip-flops or whatever you're going to wear. Uh, if it's a cooler morning, you might wear long pants and a, a long sleeve t-shirt to get through, to, you know, setting up transition. You're going to put all that, that stuff into the fifth bag, and that's going to go on the top. You're going to zip everything into your bag, and then you're going to take a picture of your empty bed. And why do we do that? That's because we are going to show that we have put everything in the bag. So if you're second guess yourself, you're going to uh, have all that done. Now, another thing that you're going to do uh, as you're getting ready is you're going to uh, pack a nutrition, a, a hydration cooler. And what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our powders. We're going to take all our different bottles and we're going to put our powders in the bottles exactly how they're going to be mixed for race day and you're going to mix put every single bottle if you're going to have a bottle for the day before the race that you're going to hydrate with when you're walking around the expo or whatever you're going to put all that in one you're going to put a bottle for before the race so you're going to drink on the way to the race and while you're setting up transition you're going to have that bottle mixed and then you're going to take a sharpie and you're going to put bottle one for day before bottle two for pre-race Bottle three in my, it'll be first bottle, second bottle, third bottle, fourth bottle, depending on how many bottles you're going to use in the race. And so you know exactly where to put them on your bike and have them ready to go on race day. You will mix those the night before, drop them in the refrigerator. And if you don't have the option of a refrigerator, if you're in a hotel without a refrigerator, you'll mix them the morning of, throw some ice in there, cool them off uh, and have them ready to go. Now, Race morning. Uh, first thing you want to do on race morning is you want to be one of the first people there. Uh, grabbing a couple extra minutes of sleep. You're not going to sleep great the night before the race anyway until you get well along in your career. I, I sleep great before races. It doesn't matter to me. I just, I just, I've done 104 triathlons now, so I just sleep no problem. But uh, in earlier in your career, you're not going to sleep real well or before a big race like your A race, you may not sleep well before the race. So getting that up extra couple of minutes of sleep is not going to make a whole lot of difference. Uh, you want to get to the venue, especially if you're having to rack your bike that morning. You want to be one of the first people in line to get in the gate, uh, park your car, get your bike in there, get checked in, 
get your your race numbers all done get your bike on a rack because you want to be able to be the one to choose the best rack location and literally the best rack rack location number one is right at the end of the rack rack space number two that's best is the second bike in and then my personal opinion is i move if i'm the third person i move against the poles that uh that hold the rack up, whether it's the, the, the other end or in the middle, I want to be against one of those because it gives you a couple of inches more room to work with. So you want to get your best possible location for your bike on the rack. And then you want to go ahead and set your transition up. You're going to open your bag up. You're only going to take one out at a time. Of course, you've already taken out your kit. You have that all on. You're going to take out your support items. You're going to put down your towel under your bike. You're going to put your towel down. You're going to get your, your sunscreen and that type of thing out. If you're using the Solar X, you've already done the sunscreen and the sunscreen at the hotel room. So you don't even have to worry about that anymore. And you're going to go ahead and uh, start setting up your transition. Now, the first thing you're going to take out is going to be after you set up your support is going to be your run bag. When you open your run bag, you're going to take and you're going to put your number belt and your hat or visor, whichever one you're going to use, and then you're going to put those down first, and then you're going to set the toes of your shoes on top of those. Why do you do that? That's because if it gets windy or if there's any gusts of wind or anything, things don't get blown around, your hat doesn't get blown off, or you're going to set your shoes on top of there. You're going to blouse your socks, you're going to blouse your calf sleeves, you're going to set those up, you're going to make sure your lefts are on the left side, your rights are on the right side. You're going to put your calf sleeves. Uh, you're going to put your calf sleeves in the opening to the shoes, so that holds them in place, so they don't knock over, fall over, whatever. And then you're going to. Uh, that's the way you're going to set up your run. You're always going to put your items, your shoes, everything that you're going to put down. You want one motion. You do not want to have your calf sleeves laid out to where you have to ball them up in transition. That's seconds. Our whole goal is to cut seconds in transition. That's where you're getting the free speed. So you're going to blouse everything up. You're going to you're going to pull your uh, when you when you get into transition, you're going to be able to pull those those calf sleeves on in one motion. You're going to be able to pull your shoes on with the elastics in one motion. You're going to grab your hat. You're going to grab your sunglasses and you're going to grab your number belt and you're just going to get up and run you're not going to put your hat on you're not going to put your belt on you're not going to put your sunglasses on you're just going to get up and you're going to take off running now why do you do that because it's much faster to put your hat on while you're moving through transition and to put your belt on when you're moving through transition and your sunglasses on it's going to take a whole lot less time it's going to take literally zero more time to do than if you're just sitting there and putting them on while you're sitting down or putting that stuff on. You're just going to go. Uh, again, you're going to take now, you're going to pull out your bike gear. You're going to take your helmet out. You're going to put your helmet down, upside down. Now, some people like to put the helmet up on the bars. If you like that, that works great. You can still do everything I'm talking about up in the helmet. But you're going to put your you're going to put your bike shoes, I should say your bike shoes down first, blouse your socks, put them in your bike shoes. If you don't have them elastic onto the, the cleats, I always use the elastics on the cleats. But if you don't, you're going to blouse your socks. You're going to put them again in the holes to your shoes so that when you grab your socks, you make sure they're, the heels are aiming toward you. All this stuff is minute details, but it all matters. You're going to pull them on. Very one motion, boom, your sock is on, your shoe comes on right on top of that, boom, velcro it on or bowl it on, done. You're ready to go with the shoes. But you're gonna, but the, you're gonna start. Well, that's how you're gonna do your shoes, but you're gonna do that after you do your helmet. You're gonna lay your helmet down so that the helmet is facing the front of the helmet is facing you. So when you pick up the helmet, you're gonna make one motion. You're not gonna have to turn the helmet, you're gonna have to figure the helmet out. You're gonna take the when you're setting up transition, you're going to take the straps of the helmet and you're going to lay them off to the sides. You're not going to clip them together. I've seen way too many people clip them together. That's a second right there. Free, free speed. Open them up. Lay them out. Put your sunglasses in. You're going to put your sunglasses in so you pick them up in one motion and they go on. Your helmet, boom, one motion goes on. Clipped, done. Shoes, boom. Socks, boom, one motion. Shoes, boom, one motion. All one motion simplify 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 everything you possibly can um so that's what you're going to do with your with your 
run and your bike, and you're going to set them up in order. You're not going to have your run shoes next to your bike shoes. I've seen that way too many times. People, oh, here's my run shoes, my bike shoes, my helmet, my this, my that, my this, my that. No, you want the last thing you're going to touch the farthest away from you. You want the first thing you're going to touch the closest to you so that everything goes doom, 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 right down the line like an assembly line. Boom, 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 boom. T1, T2, you're in and out, you're done. Uh, whew, winding myself there. Um, when it comes to your swim, now you're going to take all your swim stuff and you're going to set it right at the front of transition. Oh yeah. You're going to take your uh, nutrition. You're going to put your nutrition in your helmet also, because you can grab it. Like we talked about elastic all together. You grab it in one piece, drop it right in your pocket. You're done. You're gone. Um, you can take your swim stuff. You're going to pile your swim stuff right there at the head of, of your transition. And then you're going to do something that a lot of people, I don't see them do. You're going to walk to uh, swim in. You're going to walk down to where swim in is. You're going to make sure you orient yourself where swim in is. You could actually, if, you, if you're close enough to the swim exit, you can actually walk down to the swim exit. Take a look at the terrain, what's in front of you all the way up through transition. Maybe there's a curb that you have to watch out for. You don't stub your toe on. Uh, you want to see all that stuff ahead of time. Walk your way down. Figure out how many racks it is from the entrance to the of uh, transition to your rack. Are you racked after your rack or before your rack? What I'm talking about is if your uh, bike is, if your your gear is set up on, if you're looking at the straight at the rack, is it set up on the left side or the right side? Do you have to run before the rack in or do you have to run after the rack in to get to your gear? Know that. Very, very, very accomplished trans, uh, triathlete I was racing with this weekend. Uh, I jumped through transition much faster than him. He was much faster than me uh, in the swim. Uh, he was the first fast. He was the fastest swimmer. He was first person out of the water. I got out of transition ahead of him because he couldn't find his bike. He didn't know exactly where his bike was. He didn't have a mat on the bottom, that bright yellow and bright purple mat to spot as he come around the corner. He didn't know which side of the rack he was on. He just, he was confused. He, he didn't, uh, he lost about 25 seconds in transition trying to find his bike. So you want to make sure you know exactly where your bike is. You want to be able to spot what bike is on the end, what numbers, see if there's placards on the end, what numbers to turn at the placards, if it's on the left side, right side. And you're going to walk up and you're going to make believe, make believe that you just, you're going to do your transition. I'm going to walk up, I'm going to grab my bike. Does your bike have to come? Are you set up in front of your bike and you have to drop your bike and pull it through? Are you set up behind your bike and you have to drop and pull your bike back through? Make sure you know the motion that you're going to pull your bike out. Seconds count. Minutes count. Or seconds count. Instants count. Tenths of a second count. It all adds up. Back your bike out. You're not going to back your bike on, the, on this walkthrough. You're going to make believe you backed your bike out. And you're going to run all the way to bike out. Know exactly where the mount line is. Is the mount line right at bike out? Or like uh, we, I, just did, um, I just did Ironman Blue Ridge and bike mount was 200 yards past the exit of transition. You had to run your bike 200 yards up a hill to get out of transition to a flat spot where they had to mount your bike. So know where that mount line is. Now, when you're done with that, go to bike in. Know where that dismount line is. Remember, you have to mount your bike after the dismount line or the mount line, and you have to dismount your bike before the dismount line, or you can get a penalty. So know where that dismount line is. Know if you're going to edge to the left or to the right when you get off the bike. Know exactly what, like I say, what the train is going to be like going through transition. Make sure you know where to turn into to your bike rack. Are you going to turn to the to the left or to the right, inside or outside of that pole? Uh, walk your then then walk your way out to. Uh, to run out and know exactly what you're going to be doing there. And then you are ready now for a really, really great race day. Now, if anybody has any questions about transition, I am here. I'm willing to answer any questions you might have about transition or any other, um, any other uh, objects involving or, or items involved in, tra in, uh, in triathlon racing, just throw a, a question into the, into the, uh, the chat and I'll be more than happy to help you out. 
Uh, I love it. We've had a bunch of people in and out, and I've had some some people stay in the whole time. I want to thank everybody who's here. If I don't see a question here in the next couple of seconds, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our our discussion on transition. And uh, I'm not seeing anybody uh, throwing anything in there. And I want to thank you all very, very much for uh, showing up to my live streams. Make sure you tell your buddies in your tri clubs. Make sure you tell your people at at races that this goes on every Sunday night at seven o'clock, where you can learn from a coach exactly what it's like to get your uh, to to do triathlon. Uh, this is Coach John. I love you guys very much. Boom, I'm out. <laughs>